Yeah, no, I'm not. I, turns out I'm a. If not, you do that not, again. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, welcome to the data storage mini conference. Uh, this is a very uh, relaxed, kind of fun day about data storage. Uh, and a whole bunch of different topics on it. Basically, the idea was to have uh, as much different ways to store and eat and understand and process data as possible. Uh, so feel free to ask questions. We have like microphones for recording. And there's probably a first for LCA. It looks possible that some kind of video may be recorded if we're really lucky sound as well. Uh, so a question we asked. Our first speaker is Aryan, talking about understanding joins, of which there will be whiteboards and markers, and I believe we have the one last whiteboard marker left in Queensland. Uh, I just put it in, yes. Yeah, so that's very valuable. Uh, I need three colours, I might have to make it up. Yeah, so it's three colours as long as you want black. Uh, <laughs> so, Aryan. Howdy. What's that? I don't want to lose that. Oh, yeah. If your mobile phone rings, I'll answer it. <laughs> Which may be problematic if it's your boss. You want to have mine? <laughs> Stu, my boss is not going to call me. You could save heckling for later. This is, however, an interactive session. Am I allowed to run around? You're going to be very active there. Yeah, yeah I can't stand still, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, green. Anybody else? Anybody else? I've got two colors now. Surely we can crowdsource this whole thing. Red or blue, I'll go for. Yeah, anyone? Anyone? Want to tweet to next door? Sarah, Sarah do you have whiteboard markers? Other colors? Ah, here. Ace, thank you. Ah, no, 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 you didn't. Okay. Oh. <laughs> you get to keep that one. I need multiple, thank you. We win, yes. <clears throat> so I asked Stuart yesterday, can I get a whiteboard? Surely we have one around here somewhere. We'll check. So he walked into the room, checked, and got the whiteboard. Okay, so that's all good. Okay, who here reckons they understand joins? Okay, that's a, okay. There's one, maybe two, two. <laughs> Stuart probably gets the credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I've, I've pestered him before. Um, there is hope. Yes. So this is this is a bit from Open Query Training, where. Years ago, I was running, I was running the MySQL um, training material, which was boring as it was written by someone with a double degree in mathematics. And of course, everything is really easy. But if you're actually standing in front of a classroom with people who don't understand joins, um, that wasn't actually the way to go. I couldn't work that. And at some point, I saw someone else do another presentation, and I suddenly figured out how to do it. So that's what I, that why we're doing the visual thing and interactively because it's much more fun. It keeps you awake. I once did this for someone with a visual brain, visual spatial brain, over the phone in four minutes. So it can be done even quicker. I could do it in a lightning talk sometime. It could be, it could be fun. The interactivity gets lost at that point. Um, so let's, um, let's see if this actually all works. I think at that point, yes, it actually does change. Um, so who here uses subqueries? Let's do check that. Yeah. So. I presume you're all, by the way, using MySQL. You don't have to. So who here doesn't use MySQL but something else? That's cool. What, what do you use? Postgres. Postgres. Both. MySQL, Postgres, and Mogara. And there's a drizzle. <laughs> <laughs> sure, Mr. Heckler. OK, that's cool. Um, yeah, so I mean, the, the basics apply. Uh, the thing is, before MariaDB 5.2 um, and any stock MySQL version, um, jo um, joins are OK, and subqueries suck because they haven't been optimized properly. Um, the original people who implemented um, escaped from Sun Oracle, went to Montiprogram, and did the work they weren't allowed to do by the salespeople earlier um, because they had too many other funky things to do that sold stuff. You know, um, They fixed up what they were supposed to fix up like five years ago, and now joins actually, or subqueries now actually work fast. It's really good. <laughs> it's a bit of a non-event, but if you do use them in your apps, please do use MariaDB. Um, there's a talk about it this afternoon. Now, the reason most people are really working with joins and not subqueries in, in MySQL, and, and are not necessarily familiar with how things work, um, is that, um, well, MySQL used to not have subqueries until version 4.1, which is, of course, ancient history now. But it was quite an important issue at the time. And then before, um, certain types of joins, outer joins, didn't exist before 
SQL 92. So before then, you had to use subqueries rather than something else. So lots of textbooks, including the people who learned from the textbook and then started teaching, will have been teaching people subqueries rather than joins. And there's a big problem because with MySQL optimizing for joins rather than subqueries, you need those joins. So let's get those right. Um, so first of all, let's play a game because that's what we're here for, aren't we? <coughs> let's get this right. Stop, I'm not that tall. Um, what join keywords related to joins exist? And this is interactive, you're all playing along. Using? Using. Let's try using. Join. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's no trick question there. It's absolutely perfect. Join is a, is a join keyword. Yep. Inner. Hmm? Inner. Inner. Okay. Outer. 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 Hmm? All? No, all. Sorry. No, not all. That would be union all. No union. On, right. Hmm? On. On, yes. Or a parser symbol to go through the comma. Yes, please. I always forget that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Stu. Yes, there is a comma. The humble comma. We'll work out what an evil thing that is later. Yes. Left. Hmm? Left. Left. Yes, I'll go with left. Is this my, my SQL or SQL standard? Yes. Both. <laughs> Both. Mm, yeah, that, that's fine. Um, oh, mustn't forget natural. Yes. Um, now, in my school context, it's called straight unequal join. It's actually a modifier, so let's play with that. Um, natural, right? I have a nice statement about natural later on. You won't forget that one. Yes, what else? Where? Where? Mm, okay, let's leave that one. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, not technically incorrect, but let's let's leave that one for now. It's not in the context here. Okay, any any others? I think there's some missing. Hmm? No, not really. No. Um, how about right? <laughs> Have we done outer? Have we done outer? Um, uh, left, right, full. Hmm? We had using, we had on. I've got the complete list here somewhere, but they're so small. In a comma, oh, hang on, more. There's something called a cross join. Why not? Oh, yeah. Um, that's your straight join using on. And I did full. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. <clears throat> okay. Now, with all this fun in mind, um, how many types of join? Let's put this on the whiteboard. Look at that. Isn't that perfect? Um, how many types of joins actually exist? Yeah, I, I see a vote there. Who wants to fess up? You're not wrong. <laughs> you're even right, Mr. Heckler. He's my resident heckler. You're in the wrong row. You should be up front. No, no, one back. Oh, OK, that's good. Okay. Yeah, excellent. He visits every one of my talks. And I was at OSTC doing a couple of talks. He traveled all the way from Brisbane to Melbourne to, to heckle. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I'll, I'll stand by that. Yes. Okay. So how many how many types of join? Probably three or four. Probably three or four. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Who who thinks it's two? There, there, there's a couple of votes for two. Okay. Who reckons it's three? Okay. How, how many votes? Okay. Two. There's what was it? Two or three people? Yeah. Let's say three people. Okay. Um, types and number. Yeah. Okay. Who thinks it's three? Two, four, five. Okay. That's five people, yeah. Who thinks it might be four different types? One. And what is all the rest of what are all the rest of you doing? Uh, one. I'm going to get for one. One type of join. No, that, that's not going to. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Overflow. Um, <clears throat> no, the right answer is what guess secretly. Then eh? it's two. Um, and what are those two guys? Now you have to fess up. Inner and outer, yes, absolutely. It is inner and outer. Um, so now let's play this again. Get this right. There. Okay. So let's try inner. Let's stick for time. And outer. <coughs> okay. So we have inner and outer. Since we already have those two, we can now wipe those off the board because obviously they belonged around the group. So you get the idea. Um, 
some keywords belong on one side and some can be used with both. So now we're going to pick off this list and put it there. So then you have a bit of a grip. So which keywords might belong with inner, which might be with outer, and which might be comma on inner? Comma on inner. Do, do people agree with that? Any other ideas? Dubious? Who also thinks that, really, and is pretty sure about it? You don't have much support. He is right, though. <laughs> he is right. I'll just mention that. <laughs> you never use commas. Yes, you're, you're a good lad. Um, no, no, exactly, but you know what it means if you find it in the, in the wild. They do, they do loiter in the wild. That, that's, and that's when you need those nasty wear clauses that the, the man in the back mentioned. Um, he's right, too, but, but we didn't want those. OK, so what, uh, what else? Come on. I know it's early, you've just had coffee, but come on. I think that would be a both. Where's joint? There. That'll be that'll be both. On is both. Okay, yep. So it's using. Very good. Now we're getting there. Hang on. Give me time. Um, yep. I think we're good. Yeah? Left and right are outer. Left and right. Ah, what do, what do people think? Who said that? <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> you said, he said, who, who said left and right is outer? OK, and you said left is inner. He wins. You've, you've been in training with me, haven't you? You have. <laughs> ah, forgetful people. Um, no, left, left and right is outer. Ooh. I have a little disagreement between manuals and, and standards and stuff, but I think we can regard it as both. Both? Yes. Okay. There's no particular in, um, yeah, hindrance to it. Uh, exactly. Um, <clears throat> we'll, we'll talk about them. In, in the end, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Let's put it that way. For us, it shouldn't matter. Okay, now we still have full, cross, and straight. Anyone? Anyone? Full is going to be outer. Very good. Um, straight join is both. Yes. Join and cross is an inner, technically. Technically, absolutely. That's a good one. Very nice. The academic wins. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> well, but yes, at least you know your theory. <laughs> now apply them. Eh? Um, okay. Which of those keywords are actually not really necessary? Isn't that an interesting one? Most of those keywords are complete crap. They're really, really not interesting at all. They're just there to confuse us. Um, you know how SQL was designed? It was designed by committee, and no good comes of such things. And natural join would be a perfect example of um, things that seem like a brilliant idea that are really, really nasty. Um, so let's... Um, hmm? Uh, yeah, but, but interestingly so. Okay, let's let's go on to the next uh, the next bit of fun. Who remembers these from high school, or somewhere else? Okay, for whom wasn't this high school but something else? Where did you see them first? Uni. Uni. Okay, not high school. Where did you go to high school? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, the different states and, and countries have different things. So I'd like to learn about that. Okay, so yeah, primary school? Queensland, Queensland or New South Wales? New Zealand taught me to use that to teach me maths and addition and subtraction and stuff. New South Wales. Okay. They did a lot of taught in Victoria in secondary school. Oh, Sean is going to cry when I tell him. Well, they do now, but okay, so what's the name of it? Venn diagrams. That's, that's what they are. Now, here's the really, really cool thing you're looking at the way that relational databases work. This is not an analogy. This is how they work. They're both based on set theory. It's the same thing, which enables us to actually use them to explain joints, because yeah, it's the same thing. That's just wonderful. Visualization is a beautiful thing. Um, OK, now let's have a table. I need my pens again. Let's start here. Um, let's create a couple of tables like, like that. So we, we have a couple of sets. Um, and we do a join between, uh, I have them up there, I don't actually need to draw them now. Um, what would happen if I do an inner join 
between, um, between table A and table B based on, let's say that's the ID column in, we we're simplifying here. Hmm? To what? <laughs> that was two and three. Yes. Everybody agreeing? It's numbers two and three. Isn't that wonderful? So I'll draw those circles here so we can play with them and actually give them color. Um, two, three, one, four, and six and five. And I'll draw a bit of a thing here. That's table A, that's table B. Um, and we now get to, to, hang on, let me get this one better. I sometimes forget exactly how this works for me. I need to do one, two, three, four, and then two, <coughs> three, five, six. Okay, everybody agreeing that that's approximately right? Okay, so when you do an inner join, you use the red pen. Yeah? And you get that. And now you might have an idea of why an inner join is called an inner join. That's actually visually correct. I don't know if that's actually really where it came from, but as far as I'm concerned, it's good enough. I haven't yet seen it proven wrong, so that'll do. So now you can visualize it, you can remember it, and you won't get it wrong again. Um, we'll deal with the commas and the crosses and all the other stuff in a, in a moment when we have the rest of the visualization correct. Oh, I've got 10 minutes left, we're doing good. Um, okay, what would happen when I do a, um, when I do a left when I do a left join. Yeah. Yes, Andre, you're, you're banned for a second. Anyone? I reckon you get all the ones on the left side. Yes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four would be correct. Um, I don't know, left is, uh, left is green today. Um, okay, so you would get kind of that. Um, Let's do that. Yep. That's green, and that would be left. There we go. And we need, see, this is why I need the colors. The patterns don't quite cut it. In grayscale, it doesn't quite work that nicely. Okay, that's what you get. Um, when would that inner join not be A? When would? Well, the inner join there is A, one, two, three, four. When, when, when would it not be No, that's not an inner join. We're not talking about outer join, it's a left join. Left outer join. The inner, the inner join was that red block. Absolutely. So there's never a case when it won't <coughs> with, an, with an outer join, you get everything on the left-hand side that satisfies, plus the things on the right-hand side that match up. The bits that don't match up end up being gaps. How do gaps show up in the results set? If you do a select star, where you get the junk, they show up as nulls. Um, what was the symbol? Was it that? Yeah. So that's not a zero, that's a null symbol. Okay. That's always nice. When you build a query, don't try to build a complex query in one hit. It doesn't work. Build it step by step and do it by using select star. Do it in a tool, not in your app. Because if you put select star in your app, Arjen will get cranky at you. Don't do that. Your app will break. Well, you will get cranky at yourself later on. Your previous self will, will be hurtful, will be in pain over the later self. You know, you get the idea. Um, you always work in a team of, of at least two people, and it's you and your future self, right? So don't, don't hurt your future self or your past self. Um, OK, so that's what ends up with a left join. Um, Want to guess what a, what a right join might, um, might do? Yes, what does the result set look like in blue today? That sounds exactly right. Okay. Um. Did I stuff it up? Yeah, you included four. You've got four included in your table. Oh, bugger. Okay. I know, I know. Visual design. That's the problem with whiteboards. They don't scroll and expand. And, uh, okay, four. Oh, and it's the wrong color too. Ah, that one. User fail. Okay. So that's a four, that's a zero. Oh, that should be green. Ah, for goodness sake. At some point I'll work it out. Okay. Okay. Yes. 
fast testing. Okay, right. So now you see why a left join is a left join and why a right join is a right join. Um, so what's the kind of query that you would do? Why, why would you do a left or a right join? What kind of things can you find with that? And that's a nice, funny trick question. The, 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 answer, the, the, uh, the single sentence answer is, is kind of funny sounding. Yes, you're trying to find things that don't exist. Yeah. You can't actually do a join on something negative. Yeah? You can't join A, or you can't say A join B or A comma B where um, A not equals, A, A dot ID not equals B dot ID. That doesn't work. It really, really doesn't work. It joins everything that doesn't match up that exactly thing. It, it doesn't do what you want. So the only thing you can do is joining on something positive and then cleaning up the stuff you don't need. So if you're looking, for instance, for which customers didn't buy this particular product, is you pick out which customers did buy that product, do it, but do it with a left join, and then pick all the nulls. Does that make sense? So the ones that aren't null on the right-hand side have that product in their, in their, in their bought this product table, whatever it is, in the sales table. But when you pick out the nulls, you get a list of customers that don't have that. Okay? So with outer joins, you can find stuff that doesn't match up. And that's the only reason why you should be using outer joins. Um, many apps use left and right joins kind of because it seems like a good idea at the time, but people can't explain to me why. Try to explain, verbalize to you know the teddy bear, the colleague next door, or whatever, um, why you need to use an outer join, why you need to use a left or a right join. If you can't explain it, the answer is you don't. Yeah, you shouldn't be using an outer join if it's not necessary. So there should be an inner join. Often they work out. Often they work out to be the same. However, that depends entirely on your data set. You may find that your app suddenly breaks later when your data set increases. You know how web apps always work really well with one user testing? Um, yeah, that <laughs> it causes trouble in the real world, and this is the kind of same thing. Andre? So how do you do um, relation extension tables and query the extension along with that so that you can load, load that information? So effectively dealing with option information where you've got a super relation followed by three or four sub relations. Extra, extra attributes on the side. Again, that may or may not be there. It may or may not be there and That's again a left join. So you don't want the nulls there, so you've yep. the join dependency, and now you want to be able to query across yep. multiple so that's, and yet pull all the information in. So that's a um, that's a um, that's a, a person and it has a phone number and it has phone number one, yep. phone number two, and those point back. They each have the ID of that person and they point back at that. You would do that with the left join. Um, and you get multiple rows no, as a result. What I'm actually thinking of is a person, you've got a person and you've got the employee table that carries the extra attributes that employees have to keep going. And they point back. Yeah. So you've got the employee table and the extra attributes that employees have to keep going. And they point back. Same, same thing, thing though. I mean, this could be an attributes table. Right. Okay. Same thing. Yeah, attribute one, attribute two, yeah. whatever. Yeah? And it points back. It makes no sense pointing it forward because then you get a spreadsheet there, um, putting all the fields here. Yes. If you, have a, if you have an application that says phone one, phone two, phone three, it's a spreadsheet. It doesn't work. Um, when, you see, when you see a company trying to fill in forms, you often can tell when they're dealing with spreadsheet forms. It's, it's often rather, rather painful. Um, but let's, let's continue. Uh, we still have a couple left. Uh, what, what's a full join, you reckon? And by the way, MySQL does not support it directly, but Wikipedia and many other places will tell you how to do it. Yes? Anyone? Anyone? It's a, it's a left join combined with a right join. But all of the above, kind of, yeah. Um, so it's this whole thing, um, but no duplicates. So if you just do a left join, union all, right join, it wouldn't, it wouldn't quite work out correctly. So you do a left join. And you do need to use a union all, but you need to, to filter one of the sides out with, with not nulls, um, because there could be legitimate duplicates. If you use union, the duplicates get removed, so you can't do that. So it has to be union all, so you get all the rows, but then on one side you use where, um, 
where the ID column is not null. So you actually grab all the good stuff without the null stuff. Anyway, look it up in Wikipedia and you see, the, uh, you see what, it, uh, done, what is done exactly. Um, so MySQL does not directly implement that. One of the reasons is it could do that, but it's very nasty to optimize. So we just have never bothered and you can work around it by, by just doing union. So it works perfectly well. Um, there's no particular reason why you shouldn't be doing that. Um, and union all, or the, the full, full joints, they're fairly rare that you actually need them. Um, they have some benefits, but not, not, often, uh, not often necessary. Um, so that's a full, full outer join. So again, it's trying to find stuff that are not, that's not there, but both on the left-hand side as well as on the right-hand side. So you need to be really sure you need something like that before you start using it. Um, what, does, um, what does the comma do? What's the difference between a comma and just saying A join B? Yes, what's the difference between A join B or A comma B? Hmm? Anyone? Anyone? Ah. See, if you do A join B, usually, no, oh please no, um, you would use either on and then A dot ID equals b dot id or using id yeah and then it matches up between the two between the two tables so that information on i call that the join condition it is sitting right next to the place where you join if you use a comma you can't use these these clauses you have to stick it where in the where clause which is kind of much later in the query together with other filtering options that's not very cool because if you accidentally remove that thing, it will still join. What will, what will it do? It does a cross-join, which is a Cartesian product. You already answered the next question. Excellent. Thank you very much. No, that's, that's good. Um, so yes, if, if, you, if you're using the commas, yeah, try to get away from that and try to make it explicit. And that's why, why Gary said earlier he never uses comma, because it's just clearer. You can actually see what's going on. With a left or a right join, you can't stuff that up. Now, unfortunately, with all these explicit ones, you can still use the where instead of using on and using and, and so on. So it's still possible, but it's, that's just a really, really bad habit. With the comma, it is always separate, and that's just annoying. So do get away from that, please. Um, so a cross join is a Cartesian product. Yes? There is, there's no efficiency benefit because MySQL sorts it out internally anyway. The point is just in terms of maintenance. If you're doing a join between multiple tables, you have a where clause that actually filters things. Then there's where, where conditions that, that select your join conditions. And when you're joining, I don't know, five, six tables or ten tables, it just becomes impossible to maintain. In this case, the join condition is right next to the, to the tables that you're joining. A join condition can actually contain multiple components. It is an expression. It, it may contain more than just a dot id equals b dot id, it could have an and clause something else, and in some cases that's necessary. If I were to ask the question, which client bought product A but not product B, and you'd have to solve that with, with joins, not subqueries, you would have an and clause somewhere in the join conditions to make that actually work. You, actually, you wouldn't be able to do that with a where clause. So it does make a slight difference, but only in very specific cases, I just don't have time to cover that right now. Um, so, what, what does the cross-join do? It does a Cartesian product. What kind of result would you get out of this if you did A, join, uh, a comma B without any where clause or join condition? What's the result? Okay, you get the idea. Yes. Everything on the left, everything on the right, and all possible combinations. It's usually not what you want unless you're trying to set up a tennis competition and everybody has to play everybody. Yeah. Um, so there are valid reasons why you should do, why you could do that. Usually, you don't mean to create a Cartesian product. Now, my idea for this is, first of all, don't use the comma, so you don't accidentally create them, because visually in your query you'll be able to identify them. And if you actually mean to have one, use the word cross, because then you've identified to yourself that it's actually supposed to be a Cartesian product. Technically. Inside MySQL, the implementation between an inner join or a regular join and a cross join is identical. Cross is one of those fluff words. It doesn't mean anything. 
mathematically, there's a slight difference, but it really doesn't get, matter once you start implementing it. Yeah, you could debate on whether it's identical, but for implementation purposes and relational databases, it's the same thing. Um, so when you're looking at, at syntax, let's get that one right, and that'll be the last thing we can do, I think. Um, so you have inner join. Um, you would have a cross join. You would have a left um, No, hang on. Yeah, and same for right. Now square brackets are because it's entirely optional and those are fluff words. So if you just specify join, it's automatically an inner join. Yeah? If you say left or right, then it's always an outer join. There's no such thing as an inner inner left join. It doesn't exist. So the word outer is fluff again. So some people have an internal standard to always write outer because they write inner, some don't. I tend to just write left, right, and join, and, and not fuss with that. But the Cartesian product, please do add the cross in, because then you know you didn't actually forget the join condition, you meant it to be a Cartesian product. Does that make sense for everybody? We've huh? actually toyed with the idea of actually making it either enforcing it. Run or enforcing it. Uh, and, because and removing the comma? <laughs> What, what, that's the first thing you could do, enforce these two. Yeah? So if you use the explicit join conditions, uh, explicit join syntax, to make sure it has to have an on or using, not in the where clause. If you can start enforcing that one, the other ones will probably follow, but that's, that's one that people are probably mostly using anyway, if that makes sense. Yeah? Because once you do A join, A, A left join B, you don't want to stick it in the where clause. Okay, so we have on, where you actually have a whole expression. We have using, where you specify columns, where the names are common between the two tables. You specify, you can also specify ID, comma, and other, other columns. So it can match on multiple columns. That's entirely doable. <coughs> um, so we've dealt with on and using. Straight join um, in MySQL specifies to the optimizer that you don't want the tables reordered. And that is purely an issue of what you know is optimal in a particular case. Do not stick that in your production system because your data set will change. And that means that the, the logic that the optimizer will be able to use is then restricted. You might at some point know better than the optimizer, but that's only today. Next month it might not work. Um, once you start playing smarter than the optimizer, you will be hurt later. So use it for testing. And usually, if something goes wrong there, there's either a missing index or superfluous index in some cases. Um, there's other things wrong maybe with the query. And in very rare cases these days, there could be something wrong with the optimizer. It might be making the wrong choice. Yeah? So it's good for testing. And then you report it as a bug or ask someone else to actually help you with that if you can't figure it out. But it's not something you would use in production. Don't try to override the optimizer in, in production, like, like forcing indexes and so on. That's a really, really bad idea. It hurts people. Um, so. Last one is natural. What does natural join to? Not, not Andre, because <laughs> you know. Hmm? It, causes pain. it causes pain, yes, absolutely. You get bonus prizes, I don't know what, but something for that. Yep. What does it actually do? As opposed to what you on and using do? It automatically it, generates your on and using back. Yeah, OK. Yeah. So it matches up all, it, it, it looks at all the column names in table A and table B, and reckons, well, if there's an ID column, let's match up on that one. Oh, but wait, there's a name column as well. Let's match up on that one. Does that make sense? So let's say you have a country table, and countries have a name. And then you have a, um, I don't know, a capital table, and they have a name too, or a city table. You know? uh, it will match up on all matching column names. That's probably not a really, really good idea. So it's kind, of, it's kind of nice magic until you hit the real world. I think this was probably a good idea in the committee when people were discussing this, when, when there were these magical people in the, back, in the back room designing databases and us, the big, the big wide world, didn't have any access to this kind of stuff so that we could screw things up. This comes from COD's original paper on relational algebra where oh, yeah. the join operator that he proposed because he Yes. Implementation. It did join on attributes, and you just renamed the columns you didn't want to match. 
this sounds absolutely perfect. Yes. Um, <laughs> if, if we were all, yeah, the, 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 so Cod designed this with mathematics in, in mind. The thing is that relational, the relational um, ideas are, relational databases, the specifications are already a subset of what the, the, the set theory model um, can do, and then you stick, then you implement it, and you stick SQL on top, and it becomes even more borked. Um, it is really a pure substitute for what Cod originally envisaged. It can't be fully implemented in the way that SQL works. It just looks really nasty. But yeah, it seems like a nice idea. It also can work okay if you had a really, really strict, elaborate rule on um, what your column names should be. But we all have ID columns and name columns and that kind of stuff. And that means that it doesn't work in the real world. Now imagine that you actually make it work. Next week someone will add a column. It can match. yes. This is exactly what kind of stuff that happens. And it will suddenly match up with something else and suddenly your query doesn't work anymore. But I've only added a column. It doesn't even have special data in it. It doesn't work anymore. So my suggestion is if you ever have an employee or, or someone near you working, um, Produce that, produce a natural join, do two things. Fire them, because they're dangerous people. Do not trust them in your neighborhood. Second is, please let me know. OK? This hasn't happened yet. Uh, it has been identified in the wild, but no culprit has been found. <laughs> Just old code. People walked into a project, and that was there. But that's as far as we've got so far. No, no heads have rolled yet, and I've done this training for well almost ten years now. So that's 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 getting there. Um, so luckily, it doesn't. Well, maybe no one wants to fess up. I don't know. But I'm I'm trying. I'm asking other people to dob, dob other people in. So maybe there's more hope. So yeah. I mean, who thinks here natural natural joints are still a good idea? <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> that was the heckler, yes. So we should use unnatural. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, anyway, then here, here's some exercises. We've essentially done those. Um, and there's, there's some advanced stuff if you want to play with it later. But it's not really necessary. Um, last questions. Anyone? Anyone? Do you have this in written form somewhere? Um, Can you repeat the question? Yes. Do I have all this in written form somewhere? No, I do not, I'm afraid. Um, I'm happy to not wipe this out and you can copy it down. Take a photo? No, because it's something you would... Yes, grab it from him. Um, it's something... I would seriously recommend that you write it, because the exercise of writing it down will help, you, help your brain remember. You can even use my whiteboard markers for the color on a piece of paper. No, you will, you will write it, not me. <laughs> You've got it already, yeah? So, wh why the question then? Because then I can show it to my colleagues. Yes, no. Because it's the exercise plus the writing down that makes you remember it. You showing it to your colleagues is not going to do the trick. So, yeah, it serves no purpose. Thank you.